Charlotte's Web, Chapter 22, A Warm Wind. And so Wilbur came home to his beloved manure pile in the barn cellar. His was a strange homecoming. Around his neck, he wore a medal of honor. In his mouth, he held a sack of spider's eggs. There was no place like home, Wilbur thought, as he placed Charlotte's 514 unborn children carefully in a safe corner. The barn smelled good. His friends, the sheep and the geese, were glad to see him back. The geese gave him a noisy welcome. Congratulations, 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 they cried. Nice work. Mr. Zuckerman took the medal from Wilbur's neck and hung it on a nail over the pig pen where visitors could examine it. Wilbur himself could look at it whenever he wanted to. In the days that followed, he was very happy. He grew to a great size. He no longer worried about being killed, for he knew that Mr. Zuckerman would keep him as long as he lived. Wilbur often thought of Charlotte. A few strands of her old web still hung in the doorway. Every day, Wilbur would stand and look at the torn, empty web, and a lump would come to his throat. No one had ever had such a friend, so affectionate, so loyal, and so skillful. The autumn days grew shorter. Lurvy brought the squashes and pumpkins in from the garden and piled them on the barn floor where they, would, where they wouldn't get nipped on frosty nights. The maples and birches turned bright colors and the wind shook them and they dropped their leaves one by one to the ground. Under the wild apple trees in the pasture, the red little apples lay thick on the ground, and the sheep gnawed them, and the geese gnawed them, and the foxes came in the night and sniffed them. One evening, just before Christmas, snow began falling. It covered house and barn and fields and woods. Wilbur had never seen snow before. When morning came, he went out and plowed the drifts in his yard for the fun of it. Fern and Avery arrived, dragging a sled. They coasted down the lane and out onto the frozen pond in the pasture. Coasting is the most fun there is, said Avery. The most fun there is, retorted Fern, is when the Ferris wheel stops and Henry and I are in the top car and Henry makes the car swing and we can see everything for miles and miles and miles. Goodness, are you still thinking about that old Ferris wheel, said Avery in disgust. The fair was weeks and weeks ago. I think about it all the time, said Fern, picking snow from her ear. After Christmas, the thermometer dropped to ten below zero. Cold settled on the world. The pasture was bleak and frozen. The cows stayed in the barn all the time now, except on sunny mornings when they went out and stood in the barnyard in the lee of the stra straw pile. The sheep stayed near the barn, too, for protection. When they were thirsty, they ate snow. The geese hung around the barnyard the way boys hang around a drugstore, and Mr. Zuckerman fed them corn and turnips to keep them cheerful. Many, many, many thanks, they always said when they saw food coming. Templeton moved indoors when winter came. His ratty home under the pig trough was too chilly, so he fixed himself a cozy nest in the barn behind the grain bins. He lined it with bits of dirty newspapers and rags, and whenever he found a trinket or a keepsake, he carried it home and stored it there. He continued to visit Wilbur three times a day, exactly at mealtime, and Wilbur kept the promise he had made. Wilbur let the rat eat first. Then, when Templeton couldn't hold another mouthful, Wilbur would eat. As a result of overeating, Templeton grew bigger and fatter than any rat you ever saw. He was gigantic. He was as big as a young woodchuck. The old sheep spoke to him about his size one day. You would live longer, said the sheep, if you ate less. Who wants to live forever, sneered the rat. I am naturally a heavy eater, and I get untold satisfaction from the pleasure of the feast. He patted his stomach, grinned at the sheep, and crept upstairs to lie down. Look how fat Templeton is, because he gets to eat so much, and the sheep telling him he's eating too much. All winter, Wilbur watched over Charlotte's egg sack as though he were guarding his own children. He had scooped out a special place in the manure for the sack, next to the board fence. On very cold nights, he lay so that his breath would warm it. 
For Wilbur, nothing in life was so important as this small round object. Nothing else mattered. Patiently, he waited until the end of winter and the coming of the, lit, the, of the little spiders. Life is always a rich and steady time when you're waiting for something to happen or to hatch. The winter ended at last. I heard the frogs today, said the old sheep one evening. Listen, you can hear them now. Wilbur stood still and cocked his ears. From the pond, a shrill chorus came the voice of hundreds of little frogs. Springtime, said the old sheep thoughtfully. Another spring. And as she walked away, Wilbur saw a new lamb following her. It was only a few hours old. The snows melted and ran away. The streams and ditches bubbled and chattered with rushing water. A sparrow with a streaky breast arrived and sang. The light strengthened. The mornings came sooner. Almost every morning there was another new lamb in the sheepfold. The goose was sitting on nine eggs. The sky seemed wider and a warm wind blew. The last remaining strands of Charlotte's old web floated away and vanished. One fine sunny morning after breakfast, Wilbur stood watching his precious sack. He wasn't thinking of anything much. As he stood there, he noticed something move. He stepped closer and stared. A tiny spider crawled from the sack. It was no bigger than a grain of sand, no bigger than the head of a pin. Its body was gray with a black stripe underneath. Its legs were gray and tan. It looked just like Charlotte. Wilbur trembled all over when he saw it. The little spider waved at him. Then Wilbur looked more closely. Two more little spiders crawled out and waved. They climbed round and round on the sack, exploring their new world. Then three more little spiders, then eight, then ten. Charlotte's children were here at last. Wilbur's heart pounded. He began to squeal. Then he raced in circles, kicking manure into the air. Then he turned a backflip. Then he planted his front feet and came to a stop in front of Charlotte's children. Hello there, he said. The first spider said hello, but its voice was so small Wilbur couldn't hear it. I am an old friend of your mother's, said Wilbur. I'm glad to see you. Are you all right? Is everything all right? Two little spiders waved their forelegs at him. Wilbur could see by the way they acted. They were glad to see him. Is there anything I can get you? Is there anything you need? The young spiders just waved. For several days and several nights, they crawled here and there, up and down, around and about, waving at Wilbur, trailing tiny drag lines behind them, and exploring their home. There were dozens and dozens of them. Wilbur couldn't count them, but he knew that he had a great many new friends. They grew, they grew quite rapidly. Soon, each was as big as a BB shot. They made tiny webs near the sack. Then came a quiet morning when Mr. Zuckerman opened a door on the north side. A warm draft of rising air blew softly through the barn cellar. The air smelled of the damp earth and of spruce woods of the sweet springtime. The baby spiders felt the warm updraft. One spider climbed to the top of the fence, then it did something that came as a great surprise to Wilbur. The spider stood on its head, pointed its spinnerets in the air, and let loose a cloud of fine silk. The silk formed a balloon. As Wilbur watched, the spider let go of the fence and rose into the air. Goodbye, it said as it sailed through the doorway. Wait a minute, screamed Wilbur. Where do you think you're going? But the spider was already out of sight. Then another baby spider crawled to the top of the fence, stood on its head, made a balloon, and sailed away. Then another spider, then another. The air was soon filled with tiny balloons, each carrying a spider. Wilbur was frantic. Charlotte's babies were disappearing at a great rate. Look, isn't that neat how they let out some, some of uh, the silk, and then the wind carries them away. That's how they travel, to find a new home. But Wilbur's not very happy, is he? Come back, children, he cried. Goodbye, they called. Goodbye, goodbye. 
At last, one little spider took enough time to stop and talk to Wilbur before making its balloon. We're leaving here on the warm updraft. This is our moment for setting forth. We're aeronauts, and we are going out into the world to make webs for ourselves. But where? asked Wilbur. Wherever the wind takes us, high, low, near, far, east, west, north, south. We take to the breeze. We go as we please. Are all of you going? asked Wilbur. You can't all go. I would be left alone with no friends. Your mother wouldn't want that to happen, I'm sure. The air was now so full of balloonists that the barn cellar looked almost as though a mist had gathered. Balloons by the dozen were rising, circling, and drifting away through the door, sailing off on the gentle wind. Cries of goodbye, goodbye, goodbye came weakly to Wilbur's ears. He couldn't bear to watch any more. In sorrow, he sank to the ground and closed his eyes. This seemed like the end of the world, to be deserted by Charlotte's children. Wilbur cried himself to sleep. When he woke, it was late afternoon. He looked at the egg sack. It was empty. He looked into the air. The balloonists were gone. Then he walked drearily to the doorway where Charlotte's web used to be. He was standing there thinking of her when he heard a small voice. Salutations, it said. I'm up here. So am I, said another tiny voice. So am I, said a third voice. Three of us were staying. We like this place, and we like you. Wilbur looked up. At the top of the doorway, three small webs were being constructed. On each web, working busily, was one of Charlotte's daughters. Look, look, isn't that great? Three of them found the same doorway, and they've decided to stay. Can I take this to mean, asked Wilbur, that you have definitely decided to live here in the barn cellar, that I'm going to have three friends? You can indeed, said the spiders. What are your names, please, asked Wilbur, trembling with joy. I'll tell you my name, replied the first little spider, if you tell me why you are trembling. I'm trembling with joy, said Wilbur. Then my name is Joy, said the first spider. What was my mother's middle initial? asked the second spider. A, said Wilbur. Then my name is Aranea, said the spider. How about me? asked the third spider. Will you just pick out a nice sensible name for me? Something not too long, not too fancy, and not too dumb? Wilbur thought hard. Nelly? he suggested. Fine, I like that very much, said the third spider. You may call me Nelly. She daintily fastened her oar blind to the next spoke of the web. Wilbur's heart brimmed with happiness. He felt that he should make a short speech on this very important occasion. Joy, Aranea, Nelly, he began, welcome to the barn cellar. You have chosen a hallowed doorway from which to string your webs. I think it only fair to tell you that I was devoted to your mother. I owe my very life to her. She was brilliant, beautiful, and loyal to the end. I shall always treasure her memory. To you, her daughters, I pledge my friendship forever and ever. I pledge mine, said Joy. I do too, said Aranea. And so do I, said Nellie, who had just managed to catch a small gnat. It was a happy day for Wilbur, and many more happy, tranquil days followed. As time went on, and the months and years came and went, he was never without friends. Fern did not come regularly to the barn anymore. She was growing up, and was careful to avoid childish things like sitting on a milk, school, milk stool near a pig pen. But Charlotte's children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, year after year, lived in the doorway. Each spring there were new little spiders hatching out to take the place of the old. Most of them sailed away on their balloons, but always two or three stayed and set up housekeeping in the doorway. 
Mr. Zuckerman took fine care of Wilbur all the rest of his days, and the pig was often visited by friends and admirers, for nobody ever forgot the year of his triumph and the miracle of the web. Life in the barn was very good, night and day, winter and summer, spring and fall, dull days and bright days. It was the best place to be, he thought. Thought Wilbur, this warm, delicious cellar, with the garrulous geese, the changing seasons, the heat of the sun, the passage of swallows, the nearness of rats, the sameness of sheep, the love of spiders, the smell of manure, and the glory of everything. Wilbur never forgot Charlotte. Although he loved her children and grandchildren dearly, none of the new spiders ever quite took her place in his heart. She was in a class by herself. It's not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. The end.